Hi, and welcome to this video on delocalization, also commonly known as resonance. Delocalization essentially describes the idea that electrons can be spread out or not on a specific location or specific atom in a molecule. Resonance structures are two or more structures of the same molecule having the same placement of atoms but in a different arrangement of electrons, typically only involving pi bonds and non-bonding electrons or lone pairs. Resonance structures represent how electrons are delocalized through all or part of a molecule, but it's important to know that these structures don't actually exist individually, and the electrons are not switching places as indicated. Instead, the true molecule is a blending or hybrid of resonance structures. We draw resonance structures to help us understand the stability and reactivity of a molecule. The two structures below are resonance structures of each other. To indicate that, I draw a resonance arrow between the two. We can use curved arrows to show the difference in electron arrangement between the two structures. First, draw in all the non-bonding electrons, or lone pairs, and atoms near parts of the structure that have changed. Notice that we start with two non-bonding electron pairs on the left, and finish with three on the right. We also have a pi bond on the left that's no longer present on the right. Nothing else in the structure has changed. I can draw a curved arrow to describe that change in electron configuration. As a result of the change, we have a negative one formal charge on the oxygen atom and a plus one formal charge on the central carbon atom. Because neither of these structures is that true representation of the molecule, the better one is the resonance hybrid. To draw the hybrid, we first draw all the parts that have not changed between the two structures. Second, Draw all the lone pairs in that remain on atoms at all times. That part's optional. Third, anywhere that has a pi bond in any of the resonance structures gets drawn in as a dashed line in the hybrid. Fourth, add partial charges to represent charges that exist in some of the resonance structures. In this case, a delta negative on the oxygen atom and a delta positive on the carbon atom. These partial charges indicate that there's a shift in pi electron density toward the partially negative atoms. Those atoms are the most basic or nucleophilic, while atoms bearing a delta plus are more electrophilic. Fifth, enclose the hybrid in square brackets. And sixth, place the overall structure's charge outside the brackets. In this case, the overall charge is zero, so we don't put anything here. Now some resonance structures make a greater contribution to the resonance hybrid than others. In other words, some resonance structures have more resemblance to the true structure of the molecule, which gives us additional information about the stability and reactivity. Resonance structures can be ranked using the criteria below. The best resonance structures are the biggest contributors to the hybrid, and the criteria below are listed from the most important to the least important. Most number of octets, fewest charges, location of charge, and it's best to have a negative charge on an electronegative atom and a positive charge on an electropositive atom, and separation of charge with the smallest separation of opposite charges and the maximum separation of identical charges. Let's go back and rank the resonance structures we are looking at. In the first structure, all atoms have full octets. However, in the second resonance structure, the carbocation lacks a full octet. Using just the first criterion, we can tell that the first structure is major and the second structure is the minor resonance contributor. So what's the effect of delocalization or resonance? Delocalization allows electrons to be spread out or conjugated over two or more atoms. Delocalization stabilizes molecules. Here are some reminders before we go on. Resonance structures are not in equilibrium with each other, so molecules do not interconvert between resonance structures. No single resonance structure represents the molecules. The resonance hybrid best represents the molecule. Resonance structures are not isomers. They are different representations of the same molecule. For delocalization to be possible, a few requirements need to be met. First, p orbitals need to overlap to create a pi system. For example, benzene has two major and equivalent resonance structures, which contribute equally to the resonance hybrid. On the right, you can see p orbitals drawn on benzene. These are all perpendicular to the plane of the ring and parallel with each other. 
Overall, they overlap and form a conjugated pi system through which electrons can be delocalized. Similarly, butadiene is shown as a line structure at the far left of this next slide. Although it looks like there are two separate double bonds, in fact the p orbitals overlap to form a conjugated or connected pi system through which electrons are delocalized. If you remember from past lessons, atomic orbitals like these p orbitals will combine to form the same number of molecular orbitals. So the four atomic p orbitals overlapped to form four molecular orbitals, and I'm showing only one of these molecular orbitals. You can go deeper into this idea of molecular orbital theory elsewhere. The molecular orbital, the blue and red parts together form one molecular orbital, indicate how electrons are spread out over the four atoms, above and below the plane of the molecule. That orbital overlap requirement holds for any delocalized system. For example, in this ester, the electrons involved in resonance or delocalization are involved in the pi system. To be delocalized, those electrons must be in a p orbital to be part of that delocalized system. The consequence for the oxygen atom is that the hi its hybridization becomes more sp2-like rather than sp3 hybridized. The ester oxygen is bonded to three things, the R group, the central carbon atom, and a non-bonding electron pair, indicating that it's sp2 hybridized. That hybridization is also evident in the hybrid structure. The resonance hybrid also gives us important information about the reactivity of a molecule. Take a minute to draw the resonance structures and hybrid of the two molecules on screen. Now indicate the nucleophilic and electrophilic sites on each one. The partial charges in the hybrid tell us which sites are most nucleophilic or basic and which are most electrophilic. We can also use the resonance structures to compare between structures. In the top molecule, resonance indicates that electron density is decreasing in the alkene. In the bottom molecule, resonance indicates electron density increasing in the alkene. Comparing the two, the top alkene is the more electrophilic and the bottom alkene is the more nucleophilic. So in summary, resonance or delocalization describes two or more structures of the same molecule having the same placement of atoms but a different arrangement of electrons. We use curved arrows to show where those electrons change place between structures, but the best representation is a resonance hybrid. The hybrid most closely resembles the major resonance contributor, and we saw how to rank those resonance contributors. Orbitals must overlap for delocalization, conjugation, or resonance to occur. We can use the resonance structures and the hybrid to predict reactivity.